If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a quick deck tech for you for a brew of mine, Esper Delver. It's not my favorite brew, but it was requested by a couple people, so just really quickly. It is a legacy deck, Legacy Delver. So obviously we're going to start off with this bad boy. This is good old Delver of Secrets. Flips into Insectile Aberration. We've seen this card. If you if you know to Google or to search this deck, you know what this card does. But it's important to point out because of the restriction that it puts on you playing your deck. In this, half the cards in the deck are able to transform Delver of Secrets. 30 cards. Not counting the sideboard. So that is important. You must make sure that you have a critical mass, and what the minimum number is, I'm not sure. And granted, with cards like Brainstorm and Ponder, you can go a little bit lower, but as a result of running Delver as a 4 of, we're going to have a lot of instants and sorcery, so brace yourselves for that. So, th that's, that's common sense, I know, but it's worth pointing out anyway, because of how consequential that is in building a deck. That's part of the difference between, say, uh, a four-color Delver deck and Check Pile, or which is four-color Leovold. Uh, they don't have that same restriction. They don't get the benefit of Delver, but they aren't forced to play all these instants and sorceries. Uh, but it's not all going to care about instants and sorceries. We also have good old Stoneforge Mystic as a four of. And because we're running Stoneforge Mystic, again, if you're at all familiar with playing Legacy, you know what this does, and you know what the options are. At the very least, we're going to have Umizawa's Jite and good old Batterskull. Uh, we could run a few more, but for a reason I'm about to explain in just a minute, we leave it at just those two in the main board, with some sideboard options to shore up certain matches. We'll separate them out this way. Jite, of course, is for fighting a lot of aggro decks, Batterskull fights the control decks, and if you want to fight combo decks, well, that's what basically the rest is here for. But if you're running the, if you're running blue-white Delver, these are a given, period. If you splash another color, and if you don't splash another color, you have options there too. You can run Meddling Mage, for instance. You can run Snapcaster Mage. You can run Vendillion Click. You can run True Name Nemesis. Do you know what Nemesis means? But in my case, I'm running Esper. And that means that I now have the option to run something with black. So what am I going to take? Well, there are plenty of candidates. I, I like True Name Nemesis for its own reasons. I like Dark Confidant a lot for its own reasons. But what I've been experimenting with, and I've been mostly liking it, though it, it is better and worse in certain matches, is running two copies of Lingering Souls. Good old Dark Souls over here. So this is maybe the best anti-Force of Will card in Legacy. If they use Force of Will and pitch a blue card to counter this, then it's not a two for one, it's a two for a half. A half. So against the fair decks, especially the fair blue decks, see uh, other Delver decks, Leovold, Merfolk, uh, see some, I don't know, I'm reaching, but it, think of a fair blue deck, they hate to see Lingering Souls, plus they're in the air. You cast it one time, you can trade with a Delver of Secrets. Cast it again, like let's say for instance you double block and they spot removal a token, just cast it again. This is one of the most underrated cards in all of Legacy. And you'll notice that while it feels like a creature, it is not. It is a sorcery. That means that this flips Delver of Secrets. Esper Delver is... I think, I may be mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I've seen, and I've done a lot of looking on this, the most likely deck in Legacy to flip, to transform, Delver of Secrets into Insectile Aberration. Uh, let me take back what I said a moment ago, because I realize now that that was not true. There aren't 30 cards in this deck, there are 32 that f transform Delver, because these I had been counting as creatures because they feel like them, but they're not. They're very much not. So you have a greater chance of blind flipping Delver than any other deck. Now, of course, the more you add, the more the diminishing returns are on each. When you go from 30 to 32, it's not as great a difference as when you're going from 28 to 30, especially when, again, four brainstorms, four ponders. Uh, and to his credit, Owen Turtenwald won GPDC with four Delvers, four Stoneforge Mystics, Jite, Batterskull, two True Name Nemeses, 
and I think he had 20 lands in that deck, so his was less likely, and he won, he came in first. Chalk it up to the power of true name Nemesis, but also he made a great decision when he was building the deck, but this is meant to do something a bit different. And when I say this is experimental, Lingering Souls is great against those fair blue decks, but it's not where you want to be against a lot of the combo decks in the format. You'd rather have a creature like a Medley Major Dark Confidant that can do something, either by giving you more cards to answer theirs or directly answering. But in that sense, it's a little bit like True Name Nemesis. Perhaps not as good at blocking, and it doesn't pitch to Force of Will, but it's better against Force of Will. Okay, there's my spiel on Lingering Souls. Now to what really makes a Delver deck a Delver deck, aside from, you know, Delver. It's the instants and sorceries. I, I sound like a broken record already, and we're just a few minutes in, but four Brainstorms, and... I can get them off of here. <laughs> Four Ponders. I think that Brainstorm is either the most skill-intensive card in Legacy, maybe even in Magic, or it's number two, where Cabal Therapy would be number one. But arguably, that's not skill as much as memorization and experience. But when you have this many... So, obviously, we're going to be playing a lot of fetch lands to maximize our value. Brainstorm is sometimes just Ancestral Recall. Play it correctly, and if you draw the right cards and have the right cards in hand, it is Ancestral Recall. Okay, now, we're a Delver deck, so again, and, and because we're a fair deck that doesn't win quickly, we need to stop our opponent from doing what they want to do, and that means four Force of Will. Yeah, two for one, but putting them down on tempo sometimes means that, that card disadvantage is worth it, especially if the card you counter is that consequential. However, it, what isn't a two for one, I mean, technically I suppose it is, but not really, is Days. Now, if we're running a Delver deck that's what I like to consider a hard Delver deck, we're going to be running four Dazes in the main board. And maybe we trade some out, we side some out if we're on the draw where Daze is not as powerful, and we understand that we're going into a sideboarded game on the draw. But, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of power given the other things that we have. Like, for example, I'm going to skip ahead just a teeny tiny bit. Going along with Daze is Stifle. So Stifle is a one-mana stone rain that has <laughs> other effects. So it stops their fetch lands, and that's usually where you'll see it. It also stops their wastelands, and it stops miscellaneous triggered or activated abilities. They, you, you'll see them every now and then. <sighs> okay, so this is a, this is a fun, little, fun little card. Um, I skip a hole. There's a hole here because I was going to go with Spell Pierce next as another soft counter. Uh, but when you put Days and Spell Pierce and Stifle together, that you, you're trying to capitalize on the opponent not having very much mana. You're trying to give them little mana and capitalize on the fact that they have little. Days is not just a turn one counterspell in this deck. Days can go well beyond that because we're stone raining them at the same time. And of course, you know where this is going too. We'll, we'll get to Wasteland in just a moment, but. We are, of course, running Esper, and that means we have access to two of the most powerful removal spells, certainly at one drop, in the format. I'm, I'm playing a mix, three and three. We have three Swords to Plowshares, which admittedly deals with everything. When we start seeing Reality Smashers and uh, pieces coming out of mud, that, or whatever, that's too big to deal with normally, Swords to Plowshares will get the job done. We have to be careful about Swords, though, because it gives them life. And the reason that that's important, usually, it's equal to their power, usually that gives them some life. The reason that's important is because we're a tempo deck, we want to try to beat our opponent quickly. So we don't want to give them too much life. Give them four or five, and that might be time walking us. So that's why I'm not running the full four here. What doesn't have that downside is Fatal Push, of course. Yeah, taking over Modern, showing up in Legacy 2. Uh, as a three of, doesn't have that downside, but it isn't as universally applicable. We won't be hitting Blightsteel Colossus or Grizzlebrand or anything like that with Fatal Push. No tights about Tyrants here. Uh, that's actually it <laughs> for the... Uh, and because you're seeing more white up here, although Lingering Souls is both, you might think that I'd go higher on swords. I am worried about the drawback of, again, giving them enough life that it puts us a little too far behind. Uh, so that's why we are where we are right there. <laughs> now, for the lands, uh, I'm just going to show these really quickly on the bottom. Uh, three Tundra, 
it's a Delver deck with 18 lands. You, you, if you know enough about the format, you already know how this is going to work. So three Tundra, three Underground Sea, of course. And those will be all of our lands that actually generate colored mana. Period. Uh, you could go up to 20 like Owen Turtonwald, and that's fine. If you do so, you'll have to cut a couple cards, and that's a little tricky for me to find. Maybe a Spell Pierce and a Stifle, but then it's not quite as hard of a Delver deck as I would personally like. Uh, then we have Flooded Strand. Of course, get really just any fetch lands will do. Any blue fetch lands. In my case, it's four Flooded Strand, four Polluted Delta. It would be optimal, in general, <laughs> I say in general, for you to pay, uh, pick two of each blue fetch land. And that way you play better around Pithing Needle. However, that's not completely true for two reasons. Firstly, with this combination you can threaten getting some basics, even though you don't actually have any in the deck, you can threaten them, and the opponent might play as if you have the ability to get a basic. So, that, that is true, that's one. You can bluff, basically. The other reason is because if they're playing Pithing Needle, odds are they're either naming Stoneforge Mystic or one of the equipments, or much more likely, Wasteland. Yeah, this is a four of. So, again, Stifle plus Wasteland deprives them of mana, and then Days and Spell Pierce capitalize on their having not a whole lot of mana. Now, admittedly, in this version of the deck, you aren't doing much to kill their creatures. You only have six cards that directly, anyway, do it. But then again, you have four Brainstorms and four Ponders to get there, and you have plenty of counter magic in Force of Will and Days that will hopefully deal with the creatures on their own anyway. Now, for the sideboard, this is super experimental and admittedly tailored to my meta. The first card is the one about which I'm most iffy. It is Disenchant. I really don't like this card, but in white, I don't know what's better. Now, don't, don't, in the comments, I see you going down there and trying to put a one mana spell. No. Uh, unfortunately, because of Chalice of the Void, I can't use a one mana card here. Uh, and I'm not green, where green has a lot of good options, like Cross and Grip, for instance. Um, I can't run... <sighs> I can't remember. The one mana one from Kaladesh. I, I can't run that, unfortunately. That deals with CMC 4 or less, which is basically everything in the format. Uh, yeah, can't do that, unfortunately. So, we'll put you right over here, Disenchant. Please, if you have any suggestions, let me know. I did see an enchantment for two mana. I think it's called Serenity. Uh, on your next upkeep, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. It bites us just a tiny bit, but mostly that's great. Only issue I'm worried about is it's not an instant or sorcery, so it doesn't transform Delver. But with this many, maybe we can get away with that, with that regardless. Then we have four Meddling Mage. When I go up against a combo deck, this is coming in as a four of. Uh, you you often find that you're taking out uh, removal, spot removal, so you just side in Meddling Mage. <laughs> that rather speaks for itself, I think. Uh, next we have, speaking of dealing with combo decks, Mindbreak Trap for Storm. Da da, and similar decks. Think Charbelcher as well, etc. All right. Now to deal with graveyards, we have uh, two cards. Actually, I have a single copy of Relic of Progenitus, which can slowly deal with graveyards, see Delve decks here, for instance, Gurmog Angler et al. Uh, but we also have the ability to just pop it, draw a card, deal with it, not permanently, but deal with it completely. And then we have Rest in Peace to deal with it permanently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all other options you can consider include Ravenous Trap, but that doesn't deal with slow uh, graveyard filling strategies as well as I would like. Uh, Next, we have Retribution of the Meek. Just bury all creatures with power four or greater. Notice how many that is in this deck. Well, not really any. Batter Skull, which we can get back anyway. So we're fine. Retribution of the Meek is a three mana wrath, asymmetric wrath in the context of this deck. It doesn't even hit a uh, transformed Delver, whereas something like Meekstone would. Uh, next, we have Submerge. <laughs> Good old Submerge. If they control a force and you control an island, which, let's face it, you will, no mana cost. So, you see that five up there? No, no, that's more what it's like. Okay, and then you get to spin a creature, put it on top of its owner's library. So you reverse time walk your opponent. Uh, or rather, you ti you cast time walk for zero mana, uh, depending, depending on how you look at it. Make them draw the card they just cast. 
against a lot of green decks that can put them far enough behind. When you're playing on tempo, that may be all you need. Hit a Tarmogoyf so you can swing through, put elves back a turn, keep them from comboing. Let's see, 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, oops. I knew there was an extra card in here. One Submerge in this list. Sorry about that. That is uh, <laughs> not supposed to be here. Oh, I remember why there is an extra one. Okay, so that's because this next card was a recent addition to the sideboard. This is sort of Feast and Famine. It's gone in and out. Uh, plus two, plus two. Uh, <laughs> protection from mid-range. <laughs> it protects you from Fatal Push, Abrupt Decay, Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, a lot of the Delve creatures like Tassiger... And, and, and no, Tasker's not so much a thing in Legacy because of Caracas, but Gurmog Angler and Hooting Mandrels deals with Tarmogoyf, Nimble Mongoose, deals with Leovold, yada, 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 yada. You get the idea. And it fights combo if you need it to because, one, it makes them discard a card. Two, you untap the lands you control, which means you can hold up counter magic again. So you can have your cake and you can eat it too. It is a little slow though, so be careful about that. But because you have so many other counter spells, being a little slow can be okay. Your other counter magic should hold them back for long enough that you can turn sword online. Uh, next, da 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 da, we have uh, Sword of Fire and Ice. So this is sort of the reverse of it. This gets you by True Name Nemesis. Uh, it, it's sort of shock and draw. It's called because when they when you deal combat damage, uh, shock a creature, a player, and you draw a card. Very uh, very awesome. Deals with lightning bolt. Yada yada yada. Uh, you, you've seen this before. There's a reason Death and Taxes is running this in the main board, and that reason is true name Nemesis. They they know what Nemesis means. Next, we have uh, two copies of Thoughtseize. Just to deal with, again, combo decks, or just any deck. If we're on the play, we can take whatever their best card is. Uh, yeah, Thoughtseize is a good card. <laughs> it, it broke standard for a little while. <laughs> Twice. And then we have <laughs> Zealous Persecution. Uh, to deal with uh, token strategies like other Lingering Souls decks, it deals with Infect, uh, it deals with True Name Nemesis, because of course it has protection from us. So this is one way that we can deal with True Name. You can even bring it in, and I do, against Death and Taxes, because it deals with Thalia, it deals with a lot of their hate bears. A lot of them end with one. <laughs> they have one toughness. And so Zealous Persecution will work against them. Uh, that means that I'm actually not terribly solid against Death and Taxes in the sideboard, as I look at it. Uh, really, the only cards that we have to bring in, card that we have to bring, we have Zealous Persecution, I bring in Disenchant for the any Stoneforge Mystic deck that could bring in its own Gta or Batter Skull. Other than that, we really don't have much against them. And that's a little awkward, because Delver, Death, and Taxes is one of the most skill-intensive matches of, of Fair Magic that I can think of, anyway, in Legacy. Uh, so maybe we should bring in a little bit more. You can get Greedy and go for Meddling Mage, but even if you name something, they could still vial it in, so... Eh, it's tough. Alright, so that, that all being said, this is my Legacy Esper Delver deck. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments, and if I make a revision of this deck, I'll be sure to let you know, or I'll be, I'll be sure to make the change, or at least try it out, and give you some credit for it. So that's it, T1 Glistener Elf is signing off, take care everyone, and I hope you have a great day.